Andy Warhol, mm-hmm. you know, and thus that you may like uh, a Muad'Dib or the creator of, uh, of Ascario Dari. You see what I'm saying? Right. So things have cycles, and just because I may not, it may not be my particular taste. I cannot say, oh, he's not hip hop. He may not be doing traditional hip hop, but Run DMC was considered sellouts at one time because they changed the way hip hop was being viewed by the way they dress. If you remember, in early days, cats was dressing looking like Parliament. Yeah. With all them a, spikes. A lot of yeah. costumes, right. spikes, no, leather, right. me, so, all of that. Now, yeah. then it went to DMC with the suit, the Adidas, and it went to the streets. Mm-hmm. So again, they would look like, oh, they changing it, they messing it up. Then it changed from that. It went real dark to hoodies, and you know, it looked like cats was going to rob you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Things change, man. And, and, and You I'm literally not, could see that transition. Yeah, so. and, and, yeah, and you have to just get through it. You know what I'm saying? We got through the hammer time, didn't we? Yeah. We got through hammer time. Did we not? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we made it, right? I like hammer. But we made uh, it. And you know what? Hammer. Oh, all jokes aside, I did no, too. Man. There wasn't no against here. the hammer, no. But the problem is, is when you're in that particular time, at that time, you're looking to what first attracted you to hip hop what brought you in and that's usually where you stick with I mean that's just your bait yeah. like your first love you know and, what I'm saying? and a lot of times mm-hmm. the industry itself is a copycat industry so whatever might hit once everybody is going to try to flood people with that whether it has a lot of talent whether it's a lack of talent and it just immediately filters out the product whereas like I like Tamar they tried to make so many clones of Hammer, right. it, it turned the backlash on Hammer real hard. Well, 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 what about but anyway, oh, this, this, this is from FM 100 this, Talks. And we're sitting here with Weatherman, and I'm going to change his name to Professor uh-huh. Hilarious today. Uh-huh. He is uh-huh. teaching uh-huh. us this stuff teaching. today. Uh-huh. So, go ahead. But, um, I mean, so what about, like, because, I mean, that's that's probably the most in-depth explanation I've heard as far as that, and I, I, and I respect it, but what about lyrics like, I look good, I Look fly. Now, I ain't hating on it. Right, right, right. But right. it's not necessarily what I appeal to. Yeah, it right, it right. comes yeah, down right. to a matter of personal taste. Right. Like I said, we, we we have to accept that you know the companies are gonna push it. Um, if there's gonna be any change, it has to be within the artists themselves right. that make the change. If you ever notice, when the backlash against Hammer came, the artists pretty much kind of united against anything that <laughs> well was done. from that fold. Mm, right. So if it's gonna change again, it's gonna have to be the artists and the people who have established themselves. That's the only way you've ever seen any changes in hip hop. If Run DMC didn't get co-signed by people who was out starting it, then it would have been a big backlash, and Run DMC wouldn't wouldn't be considered as important as they were so how much control then does 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 like like artists have over their stuff and the, and the, and the transition and direction they're trying to take with their music because i mean listeners know what it is they want and they have their own opinion of what they think hip-hop is to me i don't do think you the think, business do, man do is. you I think listeners know what they want do you it, think corporate tells like us what that's it and that's where i'm going so no. that's where i'm saying so who you know who's actually saying what hip hop is and what's necessarily necessarily good. The ultimate control lies within the artists, but the companies right now and the fact they're they turned it into such a political game. What they do is the people that they want to push, they put the money behind it. The industry is kind of crooked to begin with. So what they do is they pump it into the system. Like ever since Hammer came out, nobody expected the backlash against it. Now when you say backlash. When a, when a lot of people were like, you know, dissing the flashy entertainment, you know, watered right. down lyrics. And then we celebrate Puffy today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, so it's, not it's one just of the when you're in a vacuum. Though. When you're in that vacuum, like now we're listening to Soulja Boy or, you know, or or anyone. And I don't want to make him the scapegoat for a whole generation either. Right. Y'all, we we, we kind of cold-blooded with that. Forget this kid was 16, 17 years old. He came out there. No, he, 16 or 17 years old. He was just he got more on money than all of them. Right, he, he right. was just on YouTube. He wasn't like, you know, ooh, he didn't think to he, grab he didn't know it was going to yeah. get this big, but it did. Mm. But the thing about any music, I mean, because we, we, can, we can dwell on hip-hop being that we're hip-hop artists, and that's what we're talking about today. But you got to do history of all music. It <laughs> happened in jazz when Charlie Diz, you know, and, and Miles and them started doing something different. They were like, what's wrong with these guys? This is crazy, especially John Coltrane. Mm-hmm. You try to, I was listening to John Coltrane. John, this John Coltrane, right? Yeah. So we're talking, you know, John Coltrane. And the lady said, it sounds like my fifth grader playing his horn and he don't know how to play. 
Mm-hmm. She talking about John Coltrane. But again, it all goes back to the listener. You know, I listen to classic rock. It's like one of my favorite things to listen to. I can't listen to Uncle Cracker and all these new groups and and, 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 and these cats because they don't sound traditional to me. Mm-hmm. They 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 taken out so much of the original rock Music. element yeah. that you don't hear. And that's what's happening with the hip hop. The lyricism has changed. Like you said, you you uh, you said something about those uh, lyrics earlier about the I hot get lyrics. hot. Yeah. But back in the days, we were singing Old McDonald had a farm. Remember that by uh, mm-hmm. Butter. McBiscuits and yeah. all that. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Remember, uh, remember uh, that. Square Dance Square Rap? Dance yeah. You remember yeah. uh, Picking Boogers? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we've always yeah. had silly or I, I won't say silly wait, but comedic I gotta rappers. do a disclaimer. Um, mm-hmm. Mike Moses has no idea what you said, okay? No, that's okay. He can rewind the tape. Like, no. He can rewind the tape and he can Google it. He has what everybody no do. idea. He like can this, rewind the he, tape and Google. Yeah, he he has no idea. So, Mike, please look some of this up. Okay, yeah, everybody, everybody that's listening, go do your history. The don't, Duke, don't, don't just rely uh, on duh, you know uh, any of us. I know that one. The rap and Duke. Right, right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, we've always had rappers who were Ron Reagan was president. What, what, yeah, right. We always considered you know or had rappers that were considered to be more comical than anything else. We've had Flavor Flav. Yeah. We had Old Dirty Bastard. Mm-hmm. It just keeps going on. That's a great you know one. I'm saying his name to Jesus Christ. That's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> well, Big Baby Jesus. Big Baby or, Jesus. Uh, he's dead now, right? I don't know what his name. Yeah, yeah Big yes, Old Baby Cyrus or Cyrus or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it does continue. The thing is, we are very, as a generation, I think that we are very forgetful. We, mm-hmm. we kind of just live in our vacuum mm-hmm. If I heard Wu-Tang And that was my first thing Like oh man I love hip hop I think everything should sound like Wu-Tang right. If I heard Pete Rock and Sales Smooth I'm like oh that, now that's the real that's, right. that's just because that's what you first heard mm-hmm. That's like the first girl you sleep with You, yeah. you want all the ones after that yeah. To have something to Some kind of similarity Similarities right yeah. You remember that You want to relate now yeah. You want yeah. to relate wow. now hey, 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 Every wow. time it's the first time with me brother You, <laughs> want to you better ask somebody <laughs> Special. I'm at the talk, that one. You might see me jumping out your window with a smiley face on my butt cheek. <laughs> oh! Smiling a quick plan. Oh! In the butt. But no, I mean, all in all, you know, kind of, you know, with the with the UC, I mean, we we have diversity even within our, our, our nine. You know, we're not so far on the ends of the spectrum that you just can't. There's no cohesion. But again, we like different things. We do different things. And this album is kind of a celebration of that, that we we didn't go in and make just Weatherman's three tracks, four tracks, and Andromeda's three, four. We went in as a collective of nine men getting together and said, okay, what do you got? What do you got? Well, I like this beat. You know, I mean, everybody had a hand in Just because it says DJ Pelesh produced it Or so-and-so wrote it Or Brainstorm did so-and-so Or Barrage did something Or, or VIC did something It was a collective Because you believe you me Every song on there I was running it past people This is a community thing And I know that sounds cliche But honestly, man, it's a, it's a community It don't sound cliche you know? That's what we do on this radio show yeah. We're all about the community yep. We're going to take another break here And we're going to come back Talking to uh, DJ Polaris Better know Known as the professor <laughs> and weatherman been quiet over there, but we'll, right. we'll, we'll get him. We're in. gonna make him talk. No, <laughs> they oh, we got, we're gonna you know, make we him got talk. plenty to talk about. We everybody in this room has worked with this man. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he he, he just might know more people than Vic or the hmm. same amount. Anyways, See, you're listening to Mike Moses presents Art and Soul the City you know right here on he FM 100 Talk. Be back. He knows a lot. This is Art and Soul on the radio. We're sitting here with members of the Underground Coalition, Weather and DJ Polaris. This is Mike Moses presents. You got VIC. We got Courtney White. And Mike Moses himself. 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 <laughs> himself. <laughs> himself. Funky, funky fresh in the flesh. <laughs> Let's not know. No, no. Mike don't even know what that means. Funky well, he will. Fresh. He can Google it now. So mm. you live in the Wikipedia era. Draped up, just... dripped out. Know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, because if Mike says that, then we'll just get on him yeah. even more. Because he going to ruin See, it. You, you all pick on me so much about hip-hop, but I can talk about when uh, I kind of left hip-hop. And I left hip-hop when some female group, I think it was called BWP uh. and Two Live Crew, was out, Dude, man. hip-hop was out for a long time I said that's, they, when, I that's when I left. But that's when I left. But you never started with anything. Yeah, I did. I was... Uh, I mean, earlier today, I uh, was listening to Houdini, some some classic Houdini oh, man, to run DMC. Yeah, really can't. Um, Dude, you didn't know uh, who they were before we started the radio show. 
But you knew who Red know. DMC was, but I know you didn't know who Houdini so just like, was. I'm my brother. So my just brother. like that's what we were talking about. Oh I've, I've got, I've got. Let's yeah. just be real. I have, no. I have a, C, I have a CD that has it when it was downloaded on my computer. So I tell I you what, though, you might want to back up because Mike had to readjust himself in his seat. I'm going to have to slide in the middle. No, it's like no. It's, it's like um, it's like, like a two point it was stance when, or uh, when some of the lyrics got a little bit more rougher for me, then I kind of started to to uh, get away from it. And you have to remember, I grew up. My grandmother was a Pentecostal. Would, would you like me to call you out, sir? You listening to music? Would you like me to call you out? Nah, nah. Take it easy. Take it easy. I will call him out. Take right it now. easy. Easy. Oh, easy. Oh, oh, I'm right, saying okay. my 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 hip hop experience would have been like UTFO, um, no the doubt. whole Roxanne Roxanne. So he know more um, about the hardcore than you. So, so yeah. no, no, no. Hey, UTFO. <laughs> hey, UTFO. So what, you know, yeah. Give me a song, yeah. man. Like you know, like he was saying, like he, something he that takes you back. Name year. one hip hop uh, song. So, something that takes me back, and I uh, was at Vic's thing, and he I was told surprised you I got it. it. I told Hold you on. it's one of my uh, shows. He got no, no, no. When 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 you play, played uh, uh, Dougie Fresh and Get Fresh Crew, and you was like, oh no, Mike Moses, even though, and I was like, that was the song that was that playing was at graduation. That, that was, was back before in my you was really in there. So, no, it was was yes, it was. So, because we got that. 82. <laughs> we, no, uh, uh, the yes, show was 85. Uh, the show was 85. I no, graduated I remember 86. that because that was straight so, from New yeah. York because we went to New but, York um, that year, came back with it before it came out. Oh, Lottie Dottie. Before that, no, that was the same that time. That nah. was on the same side because nah, that was on the B uh, side of the record. Man. Lottie Dottie came out before then, and they put it on that record. No, okay. never, it was never a record. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It's it was on the on same the B side of the show. Well, you know, I remember you're when right, when right, the Sugar right. Hill Gang first came out, and my mom she used to complain because she was like, "Oh, I love the beat." She was like, "But when you get up there to dance, she was like, it never ends, you know." Yep, that's and right. so I got a confession. I didn't even know about the Sugar Hill Gang probably till like maybe just before I moved in to Fort Wayne. Really? And wow. I've been there for nine years. I'd heard that song before, didn't know who sang it. So, so when you guys talk about how flashy uh, folks were trying to be in the early day, trying to look like Parliament, right. we was coming out of Parliament and right. hip hop was just starting with the Sugar Hill Gang and right. you know Curtis Blow and all those folks. So that's what I was going to, and then I got away from it. When the harder lyrics came out, when they had to bleep everything on the radio, right. when uh, uh, Two Live Crew was having problems down there in Florida and right. they were getting arrested, oh, and I was like, you know, but, maybe but the thing about it, that was an influence. But that was an influential point though in hip hop. Can you imagine you though, have if, if they have right. not succeeded in that in that battle, what would we be right now exactly. see, with hip hop? If that had not so, happened, so, but see, when you go back to it, and the bigger thing, it exposed it exposed to who was listening to hip hop. Was those hard lyrics at the time but because too, at the same time Tipper Gore yeah. Tipper Gore was yes. the one that was starting to fight um, which, it, which is funny because you know she was liberal but anyways we won't go into politics oh, <laughs> we won't go into politics mm -hmm. but um, at the same time she was giving them a hard time and she was giving Prince a hard time because uh, Purple Rain had just came out right. and she was upset about the lyrics of Darling Nikki yeah. yeah but you know what was she doing listening to Darling Nikki well, she you, was very good on free call. I know, that's the problem. Yeah. Anyways, let's get back to our guest. Uh, yeah. now, now, you know let's what? get back to our guest. We're about to get, we're about to get on the quiet I'm one sweating. right now. Let, All right, this, this, this young man right here, me and him go, go way, way back. Um, back when I first started, he was like already established. You know, winning, winning contests around town. Weather is in the building. Why don't you just give a little uh, background history, man? As far as what when I started you, rhyming, when you started what, rhyming. Tell me all and about what you. you yeah. all, <laughs> all about you. Well, man, I, st I started rhyming like around. I think it was like around eighty five, eighty six, man. But when I first started out, it wasn't something that. I was necessarily trying to do seriously like I wasn't trying to get a record deal or have people take me seriously I was just writing just funny rhymes my, my first two rhymes I ever wrote one was about Dennis the Menace and the other one was about Transformers or whatever mm. so that's kind of how I got my started on that man and I remember the first little battle I had was with uh you know the twins Terry and Jerry yeah they got a cousin his name was DJ Will if I remember right man and uh, we all used to hang down on Leaf Street up oh, there by Fairfield wow. yeah over that way and uh <laughs> I got to messing around and battling with him one day man and he ate me up man he did mm -hmm. but he, he gave me props you know he didn't he didn't diss me showed me respect man and so 